Hi everyone, welcome to Ace Engineering Academy. This is Ramesh Pabba, faculty at Ace Engineering Academy. Now we are going to take the important concepts in the measurement subject, that is error analysis and basic instruments. This is related to SSC JE course. The complete concept and numerical questions and conceptual questions, everything will be in the level of SSC JE. Right? So this is a small introduction regarding this. Now, before starting the actual topic, that is error analysis and basic instrument, let us have some idea about right? what is the syllabus related to measurement subject in the SSC JE. Right? That is, whatever the topics he has given, I have divided them into chapter wise, different chapter wise I have divided. The point is, first basics, right? So whatever the corresponding measurement concepts are there, in order to understand that, you are supposed to have few basic idea. So that's why generally basics will be there in this. All basics will be covered. Second one, error analysis, right? This is the biggest chapter, very, very, very important chapter in the entire measurement subject, right? So in this chapter, generally we study what do you mean by error? What is the reason for error? How do we minimize the error? Everything we are going to study in this. And basic instruments in this, what do you mean by instrument? What are the constructional parameters of instrument? Everything we are going to study in this. And instruments chapter, in this instrument chapter, what is PMMC? What is MI? What is EMMC? And what is electrostatic instrument? And corresponding construction, operation, formula, everything will be taken. And measurement of power, in this chapter, DC power, AC power. In that AC power, single phase AC, three phase AC power measurement, complete discussion will be there. And after this power measurement, we are going to have measurement of energy. In this energy measurement, what do you mean by energy? In order to measure the energy, what is the formula? What are the constructional parameters we require? Everything will be there in this chapter. After that, Two special topics will be there, that is potentiometer. The name itself indicates it is a meter which measures the potential, which measures the voltage, but it is working with respect to null indicating instrument principle. So what is that everything will be available in this. Next, instrument transformer. In this, transformer is used for measurement of high AC current, high AC voltage and all, that is instrument transformers. And bridges, it is also one of the biggest important chapters, that is bridges. In this, DC bridges, AC bridges. In the DC bridge, we are going to measure resistance. In the AC bridges, self-inductance, mutual inductance, frequency and capacitance, all parameters we are going to see in this chapter. And after that, CRO cathode ray oscilloscope. Sir, with this device, what we are going to measure? What are the basic idea? What are the basic principles in the CRO? Everything will be there. And digital altimeter, DVM we can say, digital altimeter, right? In this number display will be there, seven segment display will be there. So what is the corresponding operation? Everything will be available in this. After that, Different topics I have framed as a chapter, frequency meters, signal generator, multimeter, earth fault detection, all these are small topics. So what do you mean by earth fault detector, etc. And finally, transducers. In this, what is the procedure for measurement of pressure, measurement of temperature, measurement of displacement, etc, etc will be there. This is the total syllabus related to measurement subject in the SSCJE paper, right? In the AS online platform, all these topics, all these chapters explained topic by topic and then after completion of the chapter, questions are also given. So this is a simple introduction regarding entire measurement syllabus, measurement topics which are related to SSCJE. Now coming back to this today's session, sir, now in this session, out of all the chapters, one of the important chapters, that is, error analysis and 
and basic instruments I'm going to take now. Right? Right here, <clears throat> if anyone is having any problem with voice or any video audio problem, kindly let me know. Right? I'm observing your comments, that is your messages. Right? Everything is good. Okay, no problem. Yes, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Abhinav, Sai Varun, yes, good evening. RK, very good evening. Right. Now, let us start the topic. Right? That is, error analysis and basic instruments. But be clear, this is completely in the SSC JE level. What is the topic? What is the definition? What is the formula? And corresponding simple numerical questions will be there. In that way only, the corresponding session will be there. And today's session, this will be taken. And tomorrow and day after tomorrow, two more sessions are there with different chapters. Okay. Now let us start the topic error analysis and basic instruments. First of all, sir, what do you mean by error? What is the meaning of error? Very simple, guys. Suppose we want to measure one parameter. We want to measure one parameter. Suppose some load is there here. For example, some load is there. Assume that our requirement is to measure this current. Our requirement is to measure this current. Sir, everyone knows that in order to measure the current, we are supposed to use ammeter. The two ammeter must be connected in series in the circuit. Yes, I am connecting ammeter in series in the corresponding line. Okay. Sir, after connecting this device, whatever the value shown by this device, Right? It is called as, it is called as absurd value or shown value or measured value, we can say. Assume that, yes, it is showing 3.9, for example. But actually in the line, can we say that 3.9 is actually flowing, exactly flowing? No. Assume that this I may be, actually we don't know, but assume that this I is 4 ampere, for example. So my question here is, Sir, current flowing through the circuit is 4. If you are using the ammeter, can we get exactly 4 shown by the device? Definitely no. Why? It is a practical device. It will be having its own power consumption or in our language, it will be having its own error. That's why some difference will be there between, between the actually available value and the shown value, some difference will be there definitely. That difference is called as error. Okay? So, error is the difference between which value and which value? This value is called as measured value. This value is called as true value. That's why difference between these two always will be existing. Suppose, between these two, suppose if difference is not there, that case is called as ideal case. Ideally, power consumption will be zero, loss will be zero, automatically error will be zero. But our topic is measuring the parameters practically. So therefore, practical considerations are taken means definitely difference will be there. So that's why the fundamental parameter to understand the measurement complete concept is error. That's why in this session, I have chosen the error analysis chapter. Now, let us start. Sir, what is error? I am showing the definitions, right? The difference between, as I told you, difference between, or difference between measured value and true value, that only. Difference of magnitude between measured value, measured value, that I am indicating as AM. A indicates some value, M indicates measured, M indicates measured value. And the true value, true value is also called as actual value or we can say reference value also, right? Between these two, difference will be existing practically. That difference is called as error, very, very simple. Okay, right. Sir, after that, representation I'm giving here. So what is that representation? Error is represented by generally epsilon symbol. Come on, guys. It is not permittivity in our subject. It is, what is that? Error. Okay, after that. Sir, error is equal to, what I told you, measured value is indicated with AM, true value is indicated with AT. Therefore, the difference AM minus AT is called as error. So, therefore, this is the basic formula. This is the basic formula of error. 
okay always the error formula is difference from measured value to the true value that is am minus 80 here already told you this is measured value this is measured value and this is true value that only i'm showing here Air, <coughs> am is the measured value and 80 is the true value this is the fundamental point which is required in the error analysis chapter okay sir after knowing the formula now the question comes here so the error is a positive or error is negative means that depends on the condition what is that condition am and 80 relation what is it am may be greater than 80 am may be less than 80 that depends on the practical scenario that is the reason why see here if am is greater than 80 if am is greater than 80 am minus 80 is error no if am is greater than 80 then the error is positive but we cannot give the guarantee that always positive always negative no that depends on the corresponding condition that's why i'm writing if this condition is happened the error will be positive suppose if opposite is happened that is if am is less than 80 error is negative error is negative so therefore by these two statements what we can conclude now error may be either positive error may be negative that's why error may be positive or negative that's why always the error will be represented with respect to positive and negative clear that depends on the given values right right everything is going well right no problem okay right the question is sir error may be either positive or negative well and good okay right sir errors are how many types errors are how many types and based on which category errors are classified etc one by one one we will be seeing now the question here is errors are broadly classified into two one is static error one is dynamic error what is it static the name itself indicates the error value which is a constant means independent of time that error is called as static error suppose if the error is varying with respect to the corresponding time that is called as a dynamic error so therefore static error error is constant with respect to time or strictly speaking we can say error value error magnitude is always a constant it will not be varied with respect to time that is static error and dynamic error exactly opposite the error value we can say error value right which is changing or which is following the time variations then that is called as simply dynamic error but the point comes here so static means name is known static therefore constant dynamic itself indicates variable okay but what is the formula if i ask this question in the class many times many times people are getting confused with the dynamic error formula error is varying by thinking that people are changing the formula because error is changing with the time no guys error formula will be same error value will be varied with respect to time that's why i'm giving the comparison between these two what is that let us take static error versus dynamic error static error versus dynamic error the very simple all i told you this is related to ssc je so complete concept or questions everything will be in the ssc je level only kindly focus on that okay sir static error i'm giving now the error which is independent of time that is constant and dynamic error the error which varies with respect to time which depends on the time also we can say which depends on time is called as dynamic error right now the question is static static nothing but constant constant is also called as constant error or static error is also called as absolute error so that's why it is also called as absolute error of course this is anyway dynamic error or variable error okay right so what is the formula you know everyone sir as it is a static error is nothing but epsilon error is nothing but epsilon static static means absolute that is symbolically represented with epsilon naught so that's why be clear epsilon naught or 
delta a that's why in the error analysis chapter representations are very very important that is what epsilon not or we can say delta a epsilon not or delta a is called as static error or a constant error but be clear sir formula will be am minus at only sir why means the error which is a constant people are getting confused here that's why be clear error which is a constant so error should be there first error should be there first so therefore after getting the error if that error value is a constant that error is called as static error are you clear so that's why don't get confused with the statement and with the formula i repeat static error is an error first static error is an error error formula am minus at after that suppose and now i am measuring the error plus 0.4 after some time i am measuring the error same plus 0.4 after some other time i am measuring the error same plus same value is there now the question is the error value is same not varying with respect to time so that's why the error is called as static error that's why formula of static error is formula of error only but value is a constant static error suppose value is a variable that is a dynamic error that's why what is static error formula and dynamic error formula magnitude wise what is it simple formula wise same magnitude wise here it is always constant here it is varying with respect to time right most of the cases people are getting confused with this formula sir error varies no error varies error changes so why can't the formula will be change be clear dynamic error is an error first try to understand the statement dynamic error is the error first after that suppose i am measuring the error now plus 0.4 after some time i am measuring the error minus 0.5 after some other time i am measuring the error minus 0.7 now tell me what is this plus 0.4 minus 0.5 minus 0.7 etc all those are error values but constant or variable variable that's why the error with respect to time it is changing so therefore error should be there first that error value must be varied with respect to time that is called as dynamic error that's why my simple conclusion here is am minus at am minus at both are having the same formula but value is constant value is variable clear okay now sir this is static error is also called as limiting error this static error is also called as limiting error that's why limiting error is a dash yes other than what is it simply nothing <coughs> nothing but static error only constant error only okay sir in this suppose static error is there how do we correct it how do you correct it for that purpose what we require static error correction is required what we require guys static error correction is required that's why sir correction itself indicates correction itself indicates c therefore it is also indicated with delta c but what is the definition of that simply the static error correction means static error was there we are supposed or we are interested in correcting that error means we are adding the value or we are subtracting the value to correct that entire error to make that error zero correction means error should be made as zero that's why the value which we add to or subtract from the measured value suppose earlier example true value was 4 measured value was 3.9 now tell me this is the true value this is the measured value how can we correct it sir 3.9 we got it but actually how much was there 4 so how much is to be added 0.1 is to be added mathematically that is called as correcting the error okay suppose 4 is a true value suppose in other experiment we got 4.1 for example sir measured value we got it as 4.1 but a true value we require 4 so what you have to do we need to subtract 0.1 from this so we are subtracting here or we are adding here nothing but we are correcting the error that's why the value which we add or subtract right from the corresponding measured value that value is called as which value correction value 
that to after adding or after subtracting which value we are trying to find out that is 4 so therefore by adding the value or subtracting the value from the measured value to get equal to the true value that is called as correction that is a definition okay now sir this is denoted with delta c all i told you c indicates correction delta c and then sir delta a positive suppose static error is positive now tell me error positive correction should be negative opposite why error and correction both will be opposite to each other so that's why if delta a is positive the delta c is negative reverse case delta a is negative then delta c is positive that's why correction and error obviously both are opposite with each other that's why here delta c is equal to minus of delta a delta c is equal to minus of delta a what is delta a formula a m minus a t if you are multiplying with minus we will be getting a t minus a m that's why a m minus a t is the error a t minus a m is the error correction a m minus a t is a static error means a t minus a m is static error correction very very simple here also the delta c may be positive may be negative that depends on relation between these two very very simple in this way we can find out the error after finding out the error we can correct the error also that is what the actual point here right now next one is sir correction factor earlier topic was the correction value but now the topic is correction factor means measured value is there how much factor is to be used to correct now question is measured value must be corrected and equated to true value or true value must be corrected and equated to measured value means obviously true value is a reference value measured value must be corrected and equated to true value is the correct one so that's why be clear am into some correction factor means we are correcting we are modifying the measured value and we are bring it equal to true value very simple therefore correction factor is at minus am correction factor formula is always a, sorry at by am correction factor formula is at by am now sir if am is greater than at if am is less than at so therefore we can write if am is greater than at ratio will be less than 1 if am is less than at ratio will be greater than 1 so therefore the correction factor is either less than or greater than is it possible to get equal to 1 never why if it is equal to 1 means am at both should be equal am at both are equal means that is ideal case so that's why it will be either less than 1 or greater than 1 compulsory this is the basic idea regarding the error analysis what is error what are the types of errors what are the correction methods right now the next in this is relative static error sir our topic is static error but related related the definition itself says that static error expressed with respect to true value static error related with respect to true value is called as relative static error so that's why the static error taken over the true value is called as relative static error what does it mean we will be taking first static error that is taken as over the or expressed as a fraction of true value that error is called as relative static error but very very important point here is be clear relative static error formula am minus at is a static error it is taken over the true value this is a technical one in the simple language am minus at with respect to true value thing is over this is called as relative static error if you want to get percentage relative static error what is it am minus at by at in 200 that is percentage relative static error the question is very very important point is am minus at is a static error of course it is constant but true value now tell me guys if any device is given to us true value can be single or true value can be multiple based on the customer usage means suppose i have 
zero to ten ampere device. I have zero to ten ampere device. I can give zero to two ampere to that device. You can give zero to five ampere supply. Some other can give zero to eight ampere supply also. Therefore, true value can be true value can be different. That depends on the consumer. That's why the true value can be varied definitely. As the true value is varied. For the given instrument, the relative static error is variable error. The relative static error is variable error. Very, very, very important. This is called as variable error. Right? Don't get confused. True value is constant. No. For a given instrument is our topic. Suppose one instrument is there. I can give two. I can give three. I can give five. I can give eight also. So that's why it is a variable. As the true value is getting varied, the error will be getting varied automatically. That's why static error is a constant. But once it is related with respect to true value, it becomes variable error. This is very 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 important point. And more. Questions are possible on this topic related to static error. Clear? Right. The next one here is, sir, what are the corresponding characteristics, static characteristics? Just I'm giving the brief idea about this. In this one hour session, whatever the points I can cover, I'm covering all those. Sir, all these are the static characteristics. Accuracy, precision, drift, hysteresis, linearity, sensitivity, Resolution, dead time and dead zone. These are few characteristics. Okay. Out of all this, simple logic, accuracy, we expect always as high as possible. Precision, yes, we, we expect high precise value. But drift means error. Drift is nothing but error in the corresponding characteristics we can say. So error we expect always as low as possible. So that's why simply I'm writing this is desirable characteristic, right? And this is also desirable characteristic. But be clear, guys, related to each and every topic, elaborated discussion is given in the ACE online SSCJE platform. Need not to worry. But in this one hour of session, what are the topics we can cover? I'm taking all this. Drift. Drift means error content. So this is undesirable. This is undesirable. And suppose if I take this hysteresis as suppose I am talking about hysteresis error for example. Hysteresis error, the name itself indicates it is an error. It is also undesirable. Undesirable means we require as low as possible meaning as poor as possible like that we can say linearity yes desirable we expect always better linear sensitivity high sensitivity we prefer it is a desirable one resolution yes it is the smallest measurable input change it is also giving the quality of the instrument therefore it is also desirable Finally, dead time and dead zone. So dead time and dead zone means it is the delay or it is the time taken by the instrument to start. Before starting, whatever the time is taken, that is what called dead time in the simple way. It is also as small as possible. Therefore, it is also undesirable. Clear? This is the simple idea I am giving. Now let us focus on one point, accuracy. Sir, what is accuracy? Sir, accuracy means measured value must be equal to true value or close to true value means be clear if measured value is equal to true value that becomes ideal case that's why the measured value should be close to the true value the closeness with which an instrument reading approaches be clear be clear guys it is not giving the information like equal to true value no it should approach the true value correspondingly. That is called as accuracy. Always we expect as high as possible accuracy. That's what the simple point, right? Now, sir, suppose I'm giving 4 amperes of supply. One instrument is giving 3.9. Other instrument is giving 3.8. Other instrument is giving 3.7, for example. In this experiment which instrument is set to be highly accurate means 3.7 and 4 3.8 and 4 
3.9 and 4. So if we give the 4 ampere, which device is giving better value means 3.9. So therefore, that device is called as highly accurate when we compare these three devices. That's a simple idea. Right? Now, so in this accuracy topic, we are having, we are having one small subtopic like guaranteed accuracy error. Sir, this error is also called as GAE or sometimes simply accuracy error also we say. GAE or AE we can say. Okay. Sir, this is expressed with respect to full scale value. Now tell me guys, in the earlier topic I told you, static error expressed with respect to. Static error expressed with respect to. Which value? True value that is relative static error. Static error expressed with respect to full scale value, that value is called as guaranteed accuracy error. Very simple. Right? Now, it is constant. Sir, why it is constant? You know, see the formula. Guaranteed accuracy error is nothing but AM minus AT. Of course, static error. With respect to full scale value in 200. Means tell me, AM minus AT, that is our static error constant. And for a given device, Full scale value is a constant or variable. Come on guys, full scale value. Once the instrument is designed 0 to 5 or 0 to 10, something device is given to you. Can you change the full scale value? We cannot. That's why numerator is constant. Denominator is also constant. Obviously, the error is constant. That's why the guaranteed accuracy error is constant error. Okay, after this. Sir, relation between guaranteed accuracy error and percentage limiting error what is that let us see now let us see the corresponding relation what is that right see sir percentage limiting error what you have taken am minus at by at into 100 this is the percentage limiting error okay now what is a percentage guaranteed accuracy error? That is AM minus AT by full scale value into 100. These are the formulae. Now, just I am repeatedly saying this point, be clear. Based on this relation, very, very, very popular questions will be available in any examination, same way, SSC, JG also, based on this topic, yes, you are having the corresponding numerical question. You take any paper, at least one question, generally possible from this. Sir, if we simplify this, what we are going to get, right? Simply, if you are taking equation 1 by 2, etc., if you it, if it take, we will be getting percentage limiting error equal to full scale value by full scale value by true value into corresponding GAE. If you simplify this, we are getting the corresponding value. Right? Take this. This by this, for example, AM minus AT cancel, 100 cancel, full scale value by AT, GAE coming this side. This is very, very, very important, guys. Kindly follow this formula. Based on this, yes. Regularly question is possible. In the same way, I am taking some questions here. Sir, what is that question? Right? SSC JE level model only. 0 to 10 ampere. What is it? Full scale value. 0 to 10 means full scale value is 10. Right? And GAE clearly mentioned. Instrument is connected to 5 ampere. Sir, connected to 5 ampere means that 5 is called as true value. That 5 is called as true value. And find percentage limiting error. Very simple, guys. Percentage limiting error is equal to. Percentage limiting error is equal to. What is that? Full scale value 10 by true value 5 into percentage GAE 2%. So therefore, answer here is plus or minus 4% is the answer. Like this, very, very, very simple questions are possible in SSCG. Clear? Now, let us take one more question here. Right. Looking like this question is very lengthy. 
the moment we see this much of lengthy question we get we get actually we are afraid of this question we don't start the question okay i don't i don't know we leave it like this no guys only question is very lengthy but concept is very simple what is it sir here resistance is measured by the voltmeter ammeter method employing dc excitation and voltmeter very high rest means all the details of voltmeter ammeter are given after that sir here ammeter and voltmeter readings are given right voltmeter reading is 2.4 ammeter reading is 1% they have given finally find the maximum possible percentage error be clear maximum possible percentage error means maximum uncertainty maximum uncertainty is called as percentage limiting error how and everything elaborately explained in the as online platform no need to worry okay sir in that he is asking error in the form of resistance or resistance error is dash very simple guys the basic <coughs> funda is there here straight away r is equal to v by i r is equal to v by i what is v voltage error true value is not given guys only voltage error is given how much 2.4 percent and current error <clears throat> what is it one percent is given one percent is given okay sir in order to find out the total error in the resistance one basic one basic concept is a standard point whenever we are taking division whenever we are taking division the percentage errors must be added directly so therefore plus or minus 3.4 percent it is also ssc j level question direct answer 2.4 plus 1 so that is 3.4 check it here yes answer here is 3.4 straight away question right percentage limiting errors are given he is asking percentage limiting error in other parameter that is yes 3.4 percent clear right after that very very simple here one more just like here voltage resistance earlier i have taken lengthy statement but in this i am taking simply circuit here also voltmeter error is given ammeter error is given he is asking error in the resistance i am giving 30 seconds of time those who are on the line try to give the answer just now i told you try to give the answer guys straight away very very simple question try to give the answer straight away answer right no what is it r is equal to here also v by i r is equal to v by i so v by i voltage error is 2 percent current error is 1 percent obviously the answer is straight away addition that is 3 percent that is what the answer very very simple clear in this way the simple questions will be given very good arpit shukla and abhinav anand yes 3 percent but plus or minus yes uh, arpit shukla you are right plus or minus 3 percent straight away in this level only the questions will be there you need not to worry clear right the next one is very simple here suppose if percentage errors are given if percentage errors are given and he is asking subtraction or addition etc what you have to do addition or subtraction what form of errors we require value form of errors we require but here percentage form of errors are given we are supposed to convert that percentage into value form so very simple here kindly concentrate this is given as a tolerance or percentage limiting error etc no problem so what is it here so last formula what is last formula last is equal to input minus output last is equal to input minus output sir input how much 6250 plus or minus which operation is there guys subtraction operation is there therefore we should convert this percentage into value form 3% of 6250 you will be getting 187.5 minus 
plus or minus 2% of 5000 is? Yes, 100. So therefore, now check it. Sir, subtraction operation is there. And value form of error is there. I repeat, value form of errors are required for addition or subtraction. Percentage form of errors are required for multiplication or division. That's what the point. Sir, 6250, 5000. What is that? 1250 plus or minus 187 plus 187.5 plus 100 means 287.5. So many words. In this way, you are supposed to bring the error what we require. In the subtraction operation, error we require is value form. So obviously, we need to go for value form of errors. But unfortunately, percentage errors are given. We are supposed to convert that. Finally, you may be having Right? You may be having right options in percentage form. Therefore, 1250 plus or minus convert this, you will be getting 23% approximately. Yes, both are correct only. What is it? Last value is this. This is the value form of error. This is the percentage error. Very, very simple. Clear? This is the simple idea regarding corresponding error and all. Clear? Right. So the next one is, be clear. Sir, what are the things we require here? Sir, we have taken few ideas, some idea regarding corresponding errors and all. Basic idea I gave you. And elaborated discussion will be there in the corresponding AS online platform. Okay. And next one is basic instruments. So let us have some small discussion on the instrument. This is the classification of instruments. Instruments are classified. Instruments are classified into two types, right? One is absolute instrument, other one is secondary instruments. Right, okay, other people also gave the answer. Okay, right, right, come back. Sir, here, sir, absolute instruments are also called as primary instruments. Absolute instruments are also called as primary instruments. Secondary instruments are again classified into three, that is indicating, recording, and integrating instrument. This is a simple classification of instruments. But, sir, what do you mean by primary instrument? What do you mean by absolute instrument? Means, these are the instruments which give the value in terms of constant defined for it. Means, these will not show the direct value. Suppose, 3.9 is flowing. It will not show directly near to 3.9. It will show the value in terms of constant defined to that. But secondary instruments are directly showing 3.9 is flowing, approximately 3.9 will show the value directly. Okay, now let us see the definitions. Absolute instruments, right? These instruments do not give direct readings, but give in terms of, give in terms of instrumental constant instrumental constant but these are highly accurate that's why these are used in research laboratories these are used generally in research laboratories okay sir examples in the ssc je level these examples are very very important right because direct question will be there example of absolute instrument is a dash Example of secondary, in that secondary indicating, recording, integrating, what are the examples? Otherwise, which of the following device is an absolute instrument in that way? The straight away question is possible in the SSC JE exam. Right. Tangent galvanometer, release current balance and absolute electrometer. All these come under which one? Absolute instruments are primary instruments. Right. Now, second one. Sir, secondary instrument means, I told you already, these will give the value directly. What does it mean? 3 is flowing near to 3. 5 is flowing near to 5 in that way. Without any instrumental constant, these will give the value. But I told you, these are again classified into 3. Indicating, recording and integrating instruments. Indicating, simple logic. In the general, in the B.Tech college, for example, etc., Diploma College or B.Tech college, whatever the instrument you have seen, what is that? Supply is given, the pointer will be moving, showing 3. The pointer will be moving, showing 5, for example. Those devices are coming under indicating. Means, these instruments indicate or shows the value at that particular time. 
So in this time, for suppose right now, two is flowing related to two, value is shown. Five is flowing related to five, the value is shown. Those instruments are called as indicating instruments. Recording. These will give the value in terms of one graph representation, for example. Third one, integrating instrument means the cumulative summation means total value in that one hour of time or two hours of time or one day of time or 30 days, etc. In that total value will be shown by these. Those are nothing but cumulatively adding the value that is technically called as integrating. This is what the simple introduction. Now let us see one by one. Indicating instruments. Sir, I told you, these instruments will give instantaneous value of the quantity to be measured. Sir, instantaneous value, what is the meaning of this, you know, right? At a particular time, at a particular time of instant or at a particular instant. Suppose in, in the circuit, now 4 is flowing related to that. After some time, phi is flowing. Suppose you are changing something, phi is flowing. That will be shown. That is called as indicating. In this, some scale and pointer mechanisms are generally involved. Pointer will be there, scale will be there, etc. And example, PMMC, MI, dynamometer, and frequency meter, etc., etc., are coming under indicating instruments. I repeat this question. Which of the following is indicating? Which of the following is? What is it? Absolute. In that way, the questions are generally common in the SSC GE. Right? Now, recording instruments. Right? These instruments record the value to be measured. Or I told you, on a graph paper, yes, are observed over a graph paper by a lightweight pen. Means during one hour of operation, total graph will be there. During three minutes of operation or during one minute, etc. Graph will be there. Based on that graphical representation, we are going to analyze the entire system. Examples. These are used to observe the load variations, especially in our electrical engineering. Load variation analysis is very, very important. Load flow analyzer like that. Yes, it is used to observe the load variations continuously from 0 time to 24 hours. How the load is changing, analysis will be done by these type of instruments. And recording voltmeter, recording watt meter, storage oscilloscope, seismograph, ECG, all these are coming under recording type of instruments. Right? Next, integrating type of instruments. Integrating type of instruments. What are those? These instruments will give the, what I told you, total cumulated or total added value, I told you, <coughs> will give the total electricity consumed over a period of time. Example, in our homes. In our homes, energy meter every month we are playing the we are we are paying the electricity bill right so that electricity bill is given for 30 days or 31 days or simply one month means in that one month of time how much energy is utilized by us that is given here okay that example here is energy meter or we can say kwh meter or we can say what our meter also why sir energy means power into time what is a unit for power watts Unit for time, hours are second, it's no per second, minutes are hours. So therefore, watt hour meter or kilowatt hour meter. One more, KVA RH meter or ampere hour meter, nothing but charge, Q equal to integral I into dt, current into time, ampere into time, time means second or minutes or hours. So therefore, ampere hour meter. All these are coming under the category of integrating type of instruments. Clear? Right. Among all this, now let us have a small discussion related to indicating instruments. Sir, in this indicating instruments, what are the different torques we require? What are the essential parameters we require? Actually, it is somewhat lengthy topic, but brief idea I am giving in this session. Sir, in order to understand that, I am taking one instrument here. I am taking one instrument here. Sir, this instrument is having some scale. Assume that. Here, this is 0. Some scale is there like this. Linear or non-linear, don't worry. Some scale. This is called as full scale value. This is called as full scale value. And here, this is a pointer. 
here corresponding spindle everything will be available okay sir this instrument is connected in the circuit generally we connect this instrument in the circuit where the current is flowing which is to be measured assume that some current i this we are supposed to measure this we are supposed to measure at is everything going well audio video okay nice very good sir some current i sir this current i is flowing through the device then some effect will be induced example magnetic effect current carrying conductor obviously acting as a mag example i'm giving due to that magnet effect right yeah, due to that effect for example some torque is produced that torque will be acting in this direction that torque is called as deflecting torque the torque is called as deflecting torque with this torque the pointer will be moving but assume that assume that the current is 4 for example here this is 10 and somewhere else 4 is here sir if you are giving the 4 ideally speaking the pointer has to stop at 4 but my question is this pointer is moving in this direction due to this force but this pointer has to be stopped at 4 or near to 4 means definitely it should experience an opposing force or not that's why in our instrument one more torque is also required which is to be acting in the opposite direction to the deflecting torque that is to control the pointer that is called as controlling torque in order to operate the instrument these two torques are compulsorily required okay right sir this tc always will be gradually built up guys why means the pointer is keep on moving as the moment is keep on increasing moment is keep on increasing the opposing force should increase to stop the pointer therefore for a given input supply the controlling torque will be gradually built up gradually built up gradually built up and equated to the corresponding td now tell me suppose the pointer is reaching the pointer is reaching near to the given value i am giving 4 ampere for example near to the given value what is that the tc is built up built up how it is built up so many methods are there we are going to see in the corresponding as online platform okay so therefore the tc is keep on getting increased and increase assume that yes tc becomes td approximately for example once the tc becomes td approximately do you have movement of the pointer no the pointer will be reaching this position will be stopped is generally we say but due to the inertia of the pointer right even though the two torques are equally acting on that does it straight away settle down no it will make small oscillations around the four as we have given four the pointer will be are making the oscillations around the four okay therefore in order to stop these oscillations in order to stop these oscillations what we require one more torque we require that is called as damping torque therefore in order to operate the entire instrument or indicating instrument how many essential torques are required first one to move from zero deflecting torque is required to stop the pointer at the given value controlling torque is required after these two are becoming equal it is trying to make oscillations to stop those oscillations we need to have one more torque that's why damping torque is required to stop the oscillations of the pointer about its final position so this is the corresponding thing this is a simple idea regarding the entire important concept in the measurement subject that is error analysis and basic instrument simple brief idea i gave you and few questions also i have taken clear with this i am concluding the session guys if any doubt is there kindly type i will be clarifying your doubt otherwise we can close the session no issue can you respond those who are on the line so this is a simple idea regarding <coughs> this is a simple idea regarding basic what important concept that is error analysis and basic instruments okay then so this is the total discussion for today's session and tomorrow we are going to come back we are going to meet again with respect to some other topic clear guys
ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू